Hello everyone, how you doing? Okay, I'm about a month late with this video. I meant to do it a couple of weeks ago and just never, things got busy, I never got around to it. But I'm getting around to it now. Uh, as you've seen the title, this is just me thanking and saying goodbye to Phil Collins and Genesis. Now, about a month ago, tw getting towards the end of March, Genesis performed its final concert in, in London uh, at the end of their last Domino tour and Phil Collins even announced it would be the last show for Genesis and now he is officially retired and uh, unfortunately I didn't catch a show on the last Domino tour of Genesis because that show never made it to the west coast here in America so where I live so I never got to drive wherever the show would have been either san francisco san jose or whatever i never got the chance to see them because uh, they never came to my neck of the woods and so i had to miss them but that's okay because i had seen them over the years the first time i saw them was in 1986 and then in 92 and then 2007 and then of course i seen phil collins in 1985 and his last tour which I think was somewhere around 2013, 2014. I really don't remember the year. I should have looked it up before I got on here, but this is when he was sitting all for the entire concert, not playing the drums, just sitting and singing. And his son Nicholas was on the drums for his solo tour, his last solo tour. Nicholas also played drums on the last Domino Genesis tour as Phil just sat in a chair and sang all night didn't play drums so every time I've seen Genesis Phil would play would sing vocals and then would run to his drum kit and play the drums those were great shows uh, great shows and um, so uh, in this video I just wanted to pay my little respects to Phil Collins and Genesis because the music meant a lot to me uh, before I discovered Phil, became a Phil Collins fan and discovered his music and then eventually Genesis music I really didn't have much of a musical identity. I uh, really wasn't into music that all that much, other than listening to the radio and just listening to what everybody else listened to. And whatever was a big hit on the radio, that's what I listened to. Um, and then I discovered Phil Collins as a solo artist with the song Against All Odds, was actually the first one uh, that, well, the first Phil Collins songs I liked at the time. <laughs> Because uh, I think before that I heard You Can't Hear Your Love and I didn't really like it back then, which was 82, 83, until I heard Against All Odds and thought, wow, that's a great song and the drums sound cool in it and it's a ballad. Whoever says the drums sound cool in a ballad, but <laughs> they did and eventually became a Phil Collins fan and this is when the show Miami Vice was on television and they played a lot of his music on the TV show I was a big fan of me and my brothers were a big fan fans of the TV show and uh, when I started hearing Phil Collins music on it uh, I suddenly got hooked and then my brother went and bought a cassette tape of his first of not of his first album but his solo current solo album at the time which was No Jacket Required and I played the living hell out of that tape, even though it belonged to my brother, not me. <laughs> and it eventually led to us going to see him in concert in Sacramento in 1985, which was my first concert period, seeing anyone live, was seeing Phil Collins. It was me, my two brothers, and our cousin Fernando, and our friend Alfredo. We all went to the show, and we were just blown away by it. And me seeing a concert for the first time I was only 14 at the time that experience blew me away and after that I wanted to be a drummer I had to be a drummer uh, you know I had noticed Stuart Copeland from the police playing the drums and the police and MTV in those early years but I never had the courage to try it even though I was interested in the drums because watching Stuart Copeland and uh, Stuart Copeland play the drums was so cool but it was very intimidating to me, and I thought there's no way I can do it. And then I see Phil Collins in concert, and he starts the show off with the song I Don't Care Anymore, where he's playing that drum pad, that tom tom pattern um, on his white drum set. And from that moment on, I had to be a drummer. <laughs> from that moment on, I was like, even if I can't play as good as that, 
I at least want to give it a try. I at least want to have a drum set and learn how to play it and just give it a try. Um, even if I'm not as good as that, I don't care. I just want, I want to play. <laughs> so in this video, I'm not going to show every Genesis record or Phil Collins record. Just, just the ones that really meant a lot to me. And um, I even got my Genesis shirt on. <laughs> suitable for the occasion. All right, my favorite Genesis song is Supper's Ready. It's from this album, Foxtrot. It came out in the early 70s, 72, I believe. Uh, I used to know these in years like that. As we get older, I have to like actually read it. It's like, oh yeah, 72, but I believe, pretty sure it's 72. Japanese pressing of it. Woohoo. Um, yeah, this is, Supper's Ready is my favorite Genesis song. Um, unfortunately, I discovered the live version of it first <laughs> and the first time I heard uh, Apocalypse on 98 that goes all the way to the end of the, end of the song I was actually seeing Genesis in concert <laughs> uh, I had went to the uh, the Invisible Touch tour in 1986 they were, they were playing at the Oakland Coliseum I had a ticket to that uh, I only really knew uh, invisible songs on Invisible Touch Genesis self-titled record and I knew Abacab and some songs from Three Sides Live. That's all I knew about Genesis at the time. I had never heard of Supper's Ready before until the band was playing it in front of my very eyes and hearing it in my ears live, in person. And it still is to this day the most amazing in-concert experience I have ever had at a show. Even though I had no idea what the song was, <laughs> um, I knew I was listening and experiencing something big, very big. And if, and then, of course, I buy the album, the live album, Seconds Out, and I hear the whole piece. And um, it later blew me away uh, because Supper's Ready takes you on such a crazy, weird musical journey, musically and emotionally, <laughs> a journey. Uh, that's what I love about the song. This is, um, that's what it makes me feel when I hear it every single time. Especially the last closing section of Supper's Ready is so em emotional and it sounds so triumphant and big and amazing. Uh, the emotions always move me. Uh, the emotion of that song always moves me and still to this day, all these years later, the ending of Supper's Ready just oh my god i i can't help but air drum and sing along to it it really put some emotion in me and so supper's ready without a doubt is my favorite giants of song and it's from this album like i said nothing genesis did in my opinion tops what that song delivers to me both musically and emotionally uh as far as i'm concerned it's their masterpiece because it's just a fantastic song my favorite Genesis Studio album is The Trick of the Tale, and again, another uh, Japanese copy. And those of you who live in L.A. recognize these little notes here. Probably know what store I got this from. <laughs> uh, Rockaway, yeah. Anyway, um, but that's, a, that's besides the point. Um, yeah, my favorite studio album from Genesis, A Trick of the Tale. Uh, this one... This is just a perfect album to me. Um, I'm not, well, or, or as close as perfect as it can come. <laughs> um, I we have very few issues with, the, almost no issues. And if I have an issue, it's a ticky tack type of issue. <laughs> the album is fantastic, every song. And if, as we all know, it's the first album. Phil Collins becomes the lead singer because Peter Gabriel left uh, prior the album before this, so. So this is Phil stepping up and becoming the lead singer of the band. Uh, I'm trying to think what's my favorite song on here since I love the whole record so much. But it has to be probably Dance on a Volcano because I love the intro to that song. It is such a powerful intro. Uh, the, the introduction to Dance on a Volcano is one of my favorite Genesis moments. I have a lot of favorite <laughs> Genesis moments, but that's one of them. Uh, the intro to that song, just before the vocals kick in, a little instrumental intro before the vocals come in. So powerful. 
but when the vocals come in, also so powerful. It doesn't get weak from that point on. Uh, the song is incredible, um, but the whole album is incredible. Um, some great songwriting on this, and I, I think Genesis. This is my feelings, anyway. Uh, I think Genesis, when they wrote this and recorded this album, they might have felt like the odds were against them, and they decided just to go all in. Just to go completely all in on it, uh, as far as the songwriting, musicianship, um, what they've learned in the studio. They just went all in because the odds were against them. They lost their front guy. They still thought they were a good band, but the public hadn't made up its mind yet. They probably might have, might have thought once Gable's in the band, well, that's the end of that. Um, so uh, I, I, I think they felt the whole the, uh, the odds against them the whole world against them and they just went for it uh, kind of like Russia's 2112 you know they, they just you just we're, just we're just gonna do it our way and we're gonna either succeed or fail but we're gonna do it on our own terms that's what this album tells me this is Genesis just doing it at, on their own terms and uh, that's what this record pretty much says to me <laughs> um, so when I think Genesis, I, I my my mind automatically goes to this album first, just for the selection that's in it. I mean, my second favorite song on here is probably Ripples. Believe it or not, I, I think that's a great song, and there's a great live version of it. While they were in, from 1980, when they were on the Duke tour, and you could at one point when the chorus kicks in, you can hear the crowd singing along, "The Sail Away, Away." the crowd becomes louder than Phil's vocals <laughs> as they're singing along with the chorus. It, 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 it really moves me and almost brings a tear to my eye when I, when I hear that chorus. And I can hear the audience singing it back to them because they absolutely love the song and so do I. It's, it's a gorgeous song and when Genesis reunited and toured again in 2007, I went to that show also and, um, and they brought that song back which I was so happy because that was the first time I had seen it live in person, other than you know YouTube clips of bootleg recordings. <laughs> it was actually right before my very eyes, and it was it was a great moment. Uh, probably the next song I like on here the most is Los Endos. It is a powerhouse of an instrumental, just a powerhouse instrumental. And um, again, when I saw them in 1986 for the very first time, they played that song after the drum duet between. Phil Collins and Chester Thompson, that was a huge, and they went from that right into Los Angeles, and the light show that goes along with the, them performing that song was, was incredible, you know, the music and the lights together just made this amazing experience. I don't know what I like more about Genesis Live, how good they play live, because they actually, they sound amazing on record. But they take it to an even higher level live. <laughs> I don't know how they do this. They actually sound better live than they do on the record. But they sound amazing on records. So how do you go even higher than that live? But somehow they find a way to do it. And Los Angeles is a good example of that. The live version is always better than the studio version. But the studio version is fantastic. This is just a great album. <laughs> I can go on and on about track by track, but... Those three songs make the record for me. That and the song Squonk. Squonk is fa fucking fantastic. So, my now you can see why it's my favorite Genesis Studio album because I can't shut up about it. <laughs> okay, and this is where I came in on Genesis is Invisible Touch. And again, Japanese pressing. Impressive, ain't it? Anyway, um, this is the first album I bought the day it came out in the record stores. First Genesis album I bought the day it came out. Uh, of course, I didn't buy this copy <laughs> when it first came out. I still have my uh, copy I bought, I bought in the summer of 86 in my collection. It looks like it's from 1986. And it looks like it's been played hundreds and hundreds of times because it has. So, thank God I got a backup nice Japanese pressing. Because <laughs> it, it does sound better than my original. But my, to be fair, my original's been played a bunch of times since 1986 but this was the first time uh, I uh, got in on a new Genesis record the day it came out I brought it home 
to my turntable, well, my, the family stereo at that time, and played it and instantly was hooked. Um, the big song that was out was Invisible Touch, the song. Uh, at the time, I thought it was one of the coolest pop songs I ever heard. <laughs> I absolutely loved that song back then. I still like it now. It doesn't rank as high as favorite Genesis songs. It would be pretty low, on the, not, not dead last or anything, but it wouldn't be in the top 10, let's put it that way, or the top 20 probably. <laughs> but it's a good song. Um, it does sound dated. It does sound 80s, but it came out in the 80s. So what is it supposed to sound like? It's still a great pop song. I remember when I first heard it, I was very excited when I first heard it. In the car with my family, driving around town, and a radio station announced that this was the new song from Genesis, and they are playing it for the first time, and I just told everybody to shut up in the car, and I turned up the, <laughs> the volume real loud, and I told them, I don't want anyone talking. Just shut up. <laughs> and they played it, and it sounded fantastic. I still remember that day. It, it, it was amazing and uh, fell in love with the song right then and there. And couldn't wait for this album to come out. When it did, like I said, straight to the turntable, headphones on, and just loved the entire record. Uh, the favorite songs for me is Tonight, 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 Domino, and uh, Throwing It All Away. Those songs make the record for me because I, I, I realize it's, it's not a lot of Genesis fans' favorite record. In fact, this was this was like an insult to them. Like, oh, that's the final straw. <laughs> not, fuck this band. No, um, I love this record. I still do. Um, I hold it right up there with Trick of the Tail, believe it or not, and Foxtrot, uh, because it got me excited. And um, a few months later, I would go see him live in concert in Oakland. And that concert... Is still the best concert I've ever went to in my life. Uh, I have bootlegs, both CD, DVD bootlegs from that tour. It was it was fantastic, and it was one of the happiest days of my life. Really changed me, turned me into a prog fan. I, I discovered other prog music bands because I got into Genesis and you know in in the back catalog, you know, Seconds Out and all the early Peter, Peter Gabriel albums. I'm like, oh, so this is Prague, and yeah, it got me to like Yes and a bunch of other progressive rock bands and turned me into a progressive rock fan, uh, but it all came from here, even though this, people would debate this is not a progressive rock album, but it's, it, what, it's what turned me on to progressive rock. Now, like I said, I became a Phil Collins fan first, thanks to this album, No Jacket Required. This is where I saw him live in 1985 when he was out on the road supporting this album in Sacramento, a place called the Cal Expo Amphitheater, which is no longer there. I saw Van Halen there too, and Rush. <laughs> so I saw a lot of good shows in that, that amphitheater, which sadly is no longer there. It got torn down. But um, some great memories of that show. Um, like I say, it was my first concert. After that, I wanted to be a drummer. I got a drum set. I taught myself how to play. I had no drum teacher or music teacher. I taught myself how to play. Um, I sucked for many years on the drums because <laughs> it took me forever to get the coordination down. I, I was not very well coordinated to do multiple rhythms, multiple limbs. Uh, uh, that re I really had to train myself how to do that. Some would say I still need to train myself, but... Um, but I definitely needed to train myself then. Uh, but that concert and this album really inspired me to want to play the drums. And I, that's back when I was, just before I turned four, uh, just before I turned 15, I was still 14, 51 now, and I'm still playing the drums. I'm still spinning this record <laughs> like it just came out. I love this album, it's fantastic. Um, who, um, favorite songs on here, no doubt, is uh, Take Me Home. I love that song. And the song before it, Inside Out. Those two songs together, I think, are his two best songs. Uh, well, not it's not my favorite song of, of everything he does, but on this album, definitely it is. And the song uh, Only You Know and I Know. That's a great song. A really great song. Of course, I like the studio and One More Night and Don't Lose My Number. 
because uh, those were the big hit singles that came off of this album. I still remember when the video for Susudio World premiered on MTV, me and my brothers were in front of the TV set watching it. Uh, we were big Earth, Wind & Fire fans before that, uh, during the 70s. Big fans of Earth, Wind & Fire. And we had found out that, you know, Phil Col my brothers had told me that Phil Collins uses the horn section from Earth, Wind & Fire on his solo records. In fact, they were in the video for the studio. So when that video came on, we thought it was the coolest jam we had ever heard that year. And it, and it was a big song that year, that summer. I remember it was, all, it was in all the dance clubs. I mean, it, it was all over the radio. People loved the studio back then. <laughs> and, um, I think a lot of people still do. Um, again, on the list of favorite Phil Collins songs, the song wouldn't be very high on the list. It wouldn't be rock bottom either. It would be, I don't even know if it would be my top 15. Um, you know, I, uh, but at the time, the song really hooked me, really, really hooked me. And, uh, the, and it made me want to, well, it made my brother want to get this album. He bought the cassette. And like I said, I took that cassette over as if it were mine and uh, listened to that song and all the other songs to death. Um, so that got me started. So there we go. My favorite Phil Collins song is called I Don't Care Anymore, and it's from this album. Uh, uh, Hello, I Must Be Going. I almost forgot the name of this damn album. Uh, yeah, great song. This song could only been, only could have been written by a drummer. Uh, that Tom Pattern is still the coolest thing ever, even though I think any drummer can play it. It still sounds fantastic, especially on vinyl. I also have the remastered uh, vinyl, and I have the remaster have it remastered on CD. Sounds great. Uh, it's just one of those legendary um, drum patterns, drum beats, drum grooves. I mean, everybody loves the fill in in the air tonight, and so do I. But I think. Um, I don't care anymore is, is to me is the most memorable thing he did on the drums for his solo albums uh, because that drum pattern is just, just so freaking cool um, for a long time this was my favorite Phil Collins album I think it's probably still no jacket um, but seriously it's a really damn good record of course I like face value too but for the longest time this was my favorite album uh, because it had you know, of course, I don't care anymore, but also had Do You Know, Do You Care, had The West Side, um, It Don't Matter to Me, Through These Walls. Those were the songs I thought really made this record strong. Because um, those songs really made the album for me. Uh, made me absolutely love this album. I still love this album. I'm probably going to spin it as soon as I turn the camera off. <laughs> or the songs I mention, I don't know if I'll listen to the whole thing. But definitely, one of my favorites from him is that song, I Don't Care Anymore. So great. Now, like I said, I, I saw him in 1985, Phil Collins. And here's the program from that show. It was June of 1985 when I saw him. Cal Expo Amphitheater, Sacramento, California. Let's see if I can find a good centerpiece picture. Well, this one's funny. <laughs> How about this for humor? Bill Collins had a great sense of humor back in the 80s. Well, his whole career he did, but particularly in the 80s. Uh, there are more serious looking pictures of him, more musician type pictures of him. Very nice. And some pictures of the band there. So, very cool trip down memory lane here. Absolutely love it. It was a great show. And I remember when we came out of the show, we got back to the car, of course, a uh, crammed parking lot, it took us forever to get out of the parking lot, so we turned on the local rock station, and they announced, hey, Phil Collins' show just finished at Cal Expo, and they rocked the crowd, so we're going to play an hour of Phil Collins' music, <laughs> and they did, and it was the best thing ever, and they did, they played all, uh, unfortunately it wasn't commercial free, but for a solid hour they played nothing but Phil Collins as we were leaving the concert. And that was great. And then a little later that year, 
getting more towards the fall because we saw them in the summertime. Uh, home HBO uh, presented an hour of Phil Collins live on their on their sh on their channel, which has now become a, a, a real old um, in concert uh, VHS tape that only real fans have. I have it, but unfortunately I didn't get it right here. But it was called No Ticket Required, and it was filmed in Dallas, which was actually uh, a week before I saw him on his tour, so it was pretty close to the time I saw him. Um, that's another thing I saw to death, <laughs> was that was that special, because I, I recorded it off the HBO and eventually bought the No Ticket Required official video cassette, and I got a bootleg copy of it on DVD somewhere in here. Oh. Uh, Great memories of that show and that year. That was that was the year he became a superstar. First year I saw Phil Collins. Here's the I mean not Phil Collins but Genesis was in '86, October '86 in Oakland. Here's the program for the Domino Tour from 1986. Awesome center picture here. I told you the light show for this show was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And the show was, like I said, one of the best in-concert experiences I've ever had at a show. Uh, one of the best shows I've ever went to. Still nothing tops it to this day. Um, and though people say they're more of a pop music band now than they are a proggy band, um, they put on a great show back in 1986. I was 16 when I went to this show, and my little 16-year-old mind was just blown away. Just absolutely blown away. All right, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up now. That, that was most of my, not all, but some of my memories, or most of my memories of Genesis and Phil Collins. I just wanted to make this little video for for Phil Collins and Genesis because it's for, some, for over 30 years, they have just blew me away with their music. <laughs> And their concert footage, and going actually going to their concerts, to the point where it made me collect their bootlegs on CD, vinyl. <laughs> um, I even have a collection of tour programs. The shows I didn't even go to <laughs> uh, because I just wasn't into them in the '70s and early '80s. They just made me collect anything with the Genesis name on it, or any kind of official release or bootleg release. I became a fanatic fan. Uh, they turned me into a fanatic fan. They were the first band I got fanatic about. And then later, you know, Van Halen, Rush, <laughs> Dream Theater. I get, I'm now fanatic of those bands. But it started with Genesis. It started with Phil Collins. And it was a little sad to see that they are now calling it a day. It's over. And there's no, there, there will be no, as far as I know, there will be no more Genesis concerts, no more Genesis tours. Uh, I was hoping they would film one of their shows on this last tour and release it. They didn't. I do have the documentary of the last Domino when they were still in the rehearsal stadium, uh, rehearsal studio, putting their show together. It's a good documentary. It, it can be found on here on YouTube if you want to look it up. It's pretty interesting to look at. And it's the last hurrah for them, so um, I just feel grateful. <laughs> To have discovered them, and still to this day being blown away by their music. Uh, their music's fantastic. All right, that's it. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just a big tribute to Genesis and Phil Collins uh, for inspiring me so many years. All right, leave me some comments if you're a fan of the band. If you went to any of their shows, collect their albums. Any memories y you have of them? Hopefully, they're good memories. <laughs> uh, put it in the comments, so we'll have a little chat about it. All right. Take care. Take care, folks. See you next time.